Hey guys, how is it going? So, welcome back to another episode of the Rusty Beauties Restorations, Fairy Tales, Stories, and whatever you want to call them. And we are again on the 66 GT6. This is what we are doing for the last, I don't know how long, and it's been a rusty journey so far, but we've done a lot of work on it. The other side is more or less complete from metal work. It needs a little bit of grinding here and there. And then when we get uh, our spot puller machine back, we can pull here and shrink there, but we're considering the other side of the body finished. The bonnet hasn't been touched. Well, we replaced the fender, but it's held there by Clicos. So on this side, what we've done already is we replaced this driver's side floor. That was the worst part of the floor here, but it's been renewed. Here, the rear floor is still in a good shape, so we're not going to replace the whole thing. We're just going to replace the floor drop that is rotten. But we stopped working here because we didn't have the seal, and we need the seal to determine the exact position of this flange because here it was a little bit of a guesstimate on my side and uh, I was scared that I might make a big mistake without the seal so we stopped and in the last episode we went and we finished this fender here it was a mess <laughs> you've probably seen it so we, we cut out the outer fender whatever was left of it <laughs> went back to solid metal, repaired the inner fender, the end of the floor of the boot, then we re repaired a little bit here the uh, inner wheel well, we repaired a little bit of the valance, then we put uh, a new skin here and that repair is more or less complete too. Just finishing touches here and there on the weld where we can pull out some lows and uh, shrink some highs, but that's going to be in a different episode. So in the meantime we got our seal that we ordered and it came from England made by Steelcraft quality panels made in England TS16L probably that's their part number or something I don't know it looks like a good quality nice heavy 18 gauge I think we will see how good it is hopefully we don't need to, to modify it one thing I noticed the other day it is really curved in the middle I don't know if you see that here so this is going to have to be pushed up at the end and make sure that this line is straight, it's not curved. And not only in the end, but also now as we are working, because this is the part that matches our flange here. So it needs to be nice and straight. So we're going to force it up. But anyways, that gives us the possibility now to continue working on this mess right here. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to make room for this to go in, which means I have to remove the transition piece from there, clean up a little bit more here, so we can fit the seal, install the door, make sure that the door gaps are good, and then maybe with the seal installed in place, we can finish this flange here of the floor all the way till the end, and that's going to be our starting point. We also need to repair here, and then we're going to be able to click our seal to the floor and to there and maybe here a little bit and that's going to give us the perfect position of it and then we're going to be able to cut out the straightener piece from here the inner seal and replace these and then the whole assembly can go together so that's the game plan let's get crack -a All right, so I cleaned it up as much as I could. This transition piece is out and I actually managed to keep it pretty much in one piece. Of course, we're gonna have to make a new one. It's easier to make a new one than to repair this one. And it's much cheaper to make a new one instead of buying it. Anyways, but we can keep this for the 
pattern of this because last time we needed to make our own. I still have it, but if we can compare our pattern to this, we will see. Anyway, so I removed the flange from the very first, the original seal that was here. Not that one, not the one that they made, because when they made this one and put it there, they just cut the old one from here, but they left the flange there with all the spot welds. Same for the bottom here, here's the flange. So that was just sitting here and they put their flange on top of this one. So I removed it and from the bottom too, even though this piece is gonna go away soon. But for now I want it there because it keeps my door jam in one piece. Like I still have it like a, like a bridge from the back to the front. So uh, I also cleaned up there and now we can put our seal and try fitting the door and everything. But before that, I noticed here, there is a crack. I don't know if you see it. There is a crack right here. There is a crack here. And even going down here, a little bit here. I'm not sure if this is a crack yet, but I'm just gonna weld everything. There's a reinforcement piece underneath, you know, like, I don't know if you can see it here. This is the piece that I'm talking about. So the outer metal is what cracked, but the, the reinforcement metal inside is still solid. So we're gonna, just gonna weld here because that's from opening and closing the door all the time. That's what happened. So before we put the door, we're gonna weld that and then we can test fit our seal. All right, the seal is on. Hey, starts to look like a car on this side as well. Okay. So far, so good. Like, it matches the flange underneath nicely, and as long as it matches the door... Come on, dog. You wanna be in the shot? Rusty, say hi. <laughs> okay. So, it matches the flange underneath nicely. I had to force it a little bit up with the jack from in the middle you know because otherwise it's this shape so as long as it matches the door now when we put the door on i'm gonna be happy but i'm not really sure because um something is wrong like here there's a notch you know there's a notch and i put it where this flange is supposed to be because it's missing for now but that's where it is and this much is more or less the bulkhead where the bulkhead is gonna be. <laughs> We're matching it with a thin air, but that's fine. But here I can't push it in because you see here there's this flange that is on my way. Of course I can adjust that, but I don't want to yet. Here it is right exactly to the transition piece. So we'll see, we'll put the door on and I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna see a huge gap right here and the other problem that i see already is here and we're gonna have the exact same issue as the other side where we had to make a cut here and open it because this went in and then out and we had a v here like a very wide open but v what i noticed on the other side and i thought it was uh, i don't know like a jig issue or something when they were making the seals, but it's the same here. And I guess this is original, I don't know, but look at this step here, how wide it is here and how narrow it is here. So what I've done on the other side, remember that that piece on the other side was rotten and I had to repair it. So when I repaired it, I did the same as here. I put the seal and then I repaired the, this piece based on the seal it went and matched this uh, shape of the seal. So that's why I had this in and then out. So I already see that I'm gonna have to do the same thing here. I'm gonna have to cut it and open it a little bit and match it with this before I even weld it, before I even start replacing this, because this is gonna be replaced, you know? But anyways, we'll get, we'll get there. But again, I want to match it with the door first, even though the door is going to be repaired again. But for sure, we know that the door doesn't have that shape where it goes in and then out. So maybe even now I can just cut it here, open it and match it with this. And then when we replace this, we're going to match it with the seal. 
those aftermarket parts, you know. So I have the feeling that I'm gonna have to also change the fender like we did on the other side, just put the new fender that is gonna be there and use it as a reference and also this shell we might need to put on. But we will see, let's start with the door for now. All right, so the seal is in and as expected, we have a huge gap there. And I expected that because of this piece of metal inside here that I told you about. Looks like the seal needs to go back so it can go in. But it can go back because of this, right? So we know that already. Uh, the bottom, the bottom, you can see the gap is pretty good. So the height of the seal is good. Uh, it is further in, more in the back as expected, and a little bit less in the front. But as you know, the bottom of this door has been added to it. And if you look down here and pay attention to this edge, you can see that it is straight line from here going down. But how it needs to be is from here where this additional skin was added or whatever, from here it needs to curve in. So I'm assuming that the seal is in the right place in and out here we need to adjust the door which is fine but if you go back you can see that here it is the difference is much bigger which means that we have to adjust the door and the seal in this end so that's fine that's not my main issue my main issue is this gap so bear with me while i think out loud here so of course, first thing I did was I grabbed a measuring tape and I measured the seal. So this one is 15 and a quarter. And I went to the other side, measured the other one. Sure enough, it is 15 and a quarter too. Then I measured the door. It's exactly three feet, 36 inches, like on the button. Measured the other door, 36 inches on the button. Then I measured this distance here from the corner all the way to here. This one is 58 and 7 eighths. On the other side I measured, it was 58 and a half. So, the whole distance from here to there is 3 eighths too big on this side, or too small on the other, depends what, how you think about it. But I think the other side is correct, because if we remove 3 eighths from the whole distance, and we remove it from here, that's gonna shrink this gap right now roughly it is let me see five eighths if we remove three eighths it's going to be two eighths or a quarter inch which is a pretty good gap so obviously we need to get rid of three eighths of this gap so i thought maybe the, bot the bottom of the door jam became too large somehow but that's not possible because this is the original inner seal and the original straightener piece, both these parts are rotten, but parts of them are still there. And this part of the car is still solid. So I don't know how the bottom of the door jam would become too big. And second, if you look at this here, if we wanna shrink this, right? Let's say we're gonna shrink it somewhere there. This means that we have to slide the whole door forward, three eighths, and then shorten the seal somehow but how do i slide the door forward first of all the holes here are not big enough don't allow me to move the door half an inch forward or three eighths forward but even if i could then my hinges here are gonna hang over these pressings here but here on the other side we have them the exact same way so that's not our problem so I'm really confused where my problem is. Let me measure this. From the hinge to this flange, that's exactly 12 inches. And the other side is 12 inches as well. So let's measure the door jam. From that corner to the end of the seal, 31. That's 31, of course. I'm really confused. Guys, 
All right, and I haven't even dropped the bonnet yet to see what that is going to show, so let's drop it now. So we would have really nice gap here. So the door is in the right place. So it looks like the seal needs to come backwards because the bonnet, we have a nice gap here on the scuttle panel. We have a nice gap at the door. So the bonnet, the fender is in the right place. And that should be the original uh, fender of the car. The other one has been replaced. This one hasn't. <sighs> but you can see here, I don't know if you can. Let me bring you closer. And you can see here, our seal is too far out. It's a little bit too high too. But we can deal with that later. But it's too far out. So it needs to come, the whole seal needs to come backwards. But it's not possible. Well, that's a good news. That at least is a good news because if it matched here, that would be a big problem. Now, we have to just figure out a way how to move the entire seal backwards. So the problem is in this area somehow. Okay, okay, I'm starting to get there. Okay, I see the problem. <laughs> So you see, this is the problem. So we have to bend this flange further out and then the whole seal is gonna be able to move backwards. Is it that simple? Well, then, then our notch here is not gonna match, but that notch never matched for me anyways. So we just have to change the curve here. Okay, I'm actually getting more and more relaxed now. That's a good news. Well, I'm going to have to do something here as well to allow for it to move back. You know what, I'm just going to cut this off for now. I don't need this plunge here. Okay, so that's going to be replaced anyways. <coughs> Just gonna allow it here to climb over this, like this. We need another eight. Okay, it's hitting here. I'm gonna give it more room then. Huh? That's good. That's actually pretty good. So now, don't look at this gap. This we're gonna fix. So when we are fixing the door, we can adjust this gap. But that's so much better, isn't it? Now, let's adjust the height. We wanna close this gap a little. And here we have the exact same height as the other side. The flange of the seal almost touches the hinge of the door, which is good. And this line is like the extension of this body line here, right? Let me check on the other side. Yes, so we are perfect. So I'm gonna put maybe two clicos here to hold this, or maybe at least the back only, because we're not sure about the height at the front, but we want the rear to be this far. Oh, I'm really happy that this worked. Like, look, the notch is so far away from the flange now. The seal is just not perfect, but that's okay. Oh, here, actually, I'm gonna have to put screws. <laughs> Good. So now the front end needs to go in, of course. Okay, that's good. Now let's drop the bonnet again and see the front end here. In this position, even the door can go a little bit backwards because we this gap is too small and here it became a little bit too small, but our rear gap is a little bit too big. 
So oh, that's actually great. This line is perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna put another screw here to hold the seal in this on this height. So here I'm not sure if this is correct. I think it is not. This line here is going in like this is less than 90 degree here and I think it should be 90 degrees. So we might unbend this flange and bend it a little bit further down, which it looks like it's been bent wrong. Anyways, this is easy to deal with, but so far so good. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay. I don't know if you can see all the way here, but looks like the bottom of the door is a little bit further out than the rear panel here and the top is a little bit further in. Oh, actually, the top is okay. I want to try and pull this top of the door out a little bit, very little. I'm going to loosen these two bolts and there's another screw inside. I'm going to loosen them and I'm going to try to pull this out in order to push this corner in because that's how it works. If we don't loosen this hinge, the bottom hinge, we only loosen the top hinge and we pull out, we're gonna have a pivoting point here between this hinge and the striker. Many people believe that if you open, if you pull this out, this corner, that's gonna pull that corner out too. It's gonna pull it, but very, very little. So the pivoting point is gonna be here, the pivoting line, and it's gonna pull this corner a lot out, a little bit gonna pull out there, but it's gonna push this in because the door is gonna do this. The problem is this screw inside. I don't know if it is gonna be easy to loosen it. Let me try. No. But let's try like this. No, I have to take the door out. All right, we're gonna do it when I have the door out, but I wanna push it, push this a little bit in. The old part here is where we wanna be, even though this is too low. We have a huge gap here, but again, the door is, the door is not correct. We're gonna keep it the same way because the door is, repaired and we don't know if it is correct or not. I think the door needs to be like this. In this case, actually, we don't need the door there to align the seal. We want it right where it is here in this end and in the rear end, we want it to match this. Okay, I'll take the door out now again. Okay, so we want the seal to match this. Unfortunately, that's way too much for only cutting it here. But I don't see another way. Okay, let me clamp the bottom. All right. So how do we bring it out all the way? And I have an idea how to make it wider here. Do you see the height of this flange here? The, one, the vertical one and the height there? Yep. That's where I think their mistake is. So their stamping is, is wrong, you see? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unbend this flange, the, this one, and we're gonna bend it a little bit higher in this end. Here we're gonna keep it where it is but here we're gonna unbend it and we're gonna bend it like maybe quarter inch. If we bend it even more, we can avoid cutting it here, but then this line is not gonna match here, but we can modify this instead of this. Eh, does it really matter? I don't know, we shall see. So first of all, let me move this bend and then we're gonna decide what to do here. Okay, so you see, this is the reason why I don't like buying 
new parts, aftermarket parts, I mean, because they just don't fit and you have to modify them. And in most of the cases, it is because the car has been modified, because these cars have been worked on for years and even original parts don't fit on them anymore every time you have to modify the parts but in this case it's even the part is not properly done like you see you can clearly see how this flange is much narrower here than here and you can clearly see how here this is much wider than here and this is a problem obviously so you have to modify them so that's why in most cases i prefer to repair my own parts the ones that I have, or if I can't repair them, I'm trying to make my own part even from scratch, and it takes me shorter time than mm. playing with a new part. So anyways, let's flatten this. Do I need to go all the way? Yeah, I'll go all the way. It's gonna be tricky to bend after, but I'm gonna go a little bit further. Don't worry, we're gonna flatten it. I don't know if we're gonna fit on the English wheel. Probably not, but we're gonna flatten it on the flanging hammer. So here the bend is right where this flange ends and we it needs to stay where it is. We're gonna have to modify the other end. Okay, so here we are using a flat die at the bottom so we don't stretch it. And now here, let's see if we can trick it. <laughs> this comes out of this side, yeah? Okay. Let's... <laughs> I'm happy that this works that way. It's almost like a finger break. Let me go! Oh, it's actually pretty good. And now that we are at it, I think we should do the same here. We should unbend this and bend it further in. So I put it exactly where it was before with the two screws and clamped the flange the same way. And ha -ha, we have a nice continuous line here. Of course, like as we expected, this line doesn't match now, but that's where we're gonna modify this one. We have to do this repair anyways. So when we're repairing this, we're gonna just move this line a little bit out and it's gonna be perfect. All right, so Let's put the door back on. But, if, but before we put it back on, let's see if we can loosen these two set screws so we can uh, adjust the door in and out. And if you haven't seen that before, this is uh, our impact screwdriver. So when you hammer on it on the side, you see it tries to turn. So the hit by the hammer not only turns it, but it also pushes it against the screw so it doesn't come out and we'll see if it is going to work like this. Wow. This one started, but this one... Huh. There's another one that I want to buy. It's like, a, it has a handle and you can put it on a air chisel. And as the air chisel is doing its things like da -da 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 -da, you have a handle here that you can turn slowly and loosen it. So I want to buy that one. So before I ruin it completely, I'm going to stop and maybe I'm gonna buy one of these things. Okay, we'll leave that for now. Let's install the door. Well, it definitely looks better. Not better, I think it looks perfect. So here, 
the door is sticking out, but we said that's a problem that we're going to solve when we were working on the door because from here down, the door needs to curve a little bit and it doesn't curve much. So I'm not worried about this and it's consistent. Well, here maybe goes a little bit further in. That gap also, we're going to adjust when we're working on the door, that's not a problem. But it looks like, yeah, it went further in again. So maybe, so maybe after all, we're going to cut this here and open it a little bit, but we're going to decide that at the end. And now I think we're going to cut this out and put our new part there again with Clicos so it can match the seal there and we can adjust the door gap a little bit better. I'm going to make a cut somewhere here. We're not going to use the whole part because the repair panel that we bought reaches all the way to the body line up there. I don't want to mess up this body line. It is pretty good. So we're going to cut our part and this a little bit lower. This is where we're going to make the joint. And I'm going to put the new part with clicos. I'm going to overlap them for now. Later we're going to cut them and butt weld them. But for now I'm just going to overlap them a little bit. So we can fit the part there, click with it, match it with the seal, and then uh, we're going to have all the shells outside installed and they're going to be our guide for all the internal repairs that we're going to do. They're going to be positioned temporarily again with clicos, but we will know their position and we're going to be able to recreate the whole uh, external situation anytime we want. All right, so I cut a little bit higher. The flange on this side is cleared, so this is removed, and on this side as well. So this is our repair panel, and that's how high it is designed to go all the way to this body line here. But I think we're gonna cut it shorter. We're gonna cut the flanges to the exact height here, so we don't need to overlap them, because when we overlap them, we have to overlap both sides and it's gonna be hard. So we're gonna cut the flanges to the exact height here, and here to match these, but then from there we're just gonna leave a lip up so they can overlap here and we can put two clicos to hold it there so we can memorize the position. As for here, you see this one has a step here and this one has a huge flange here at the end. Normally these have just a little bit, like maybe 16th, a little bit of a rolled edge which overlaps here with this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to remove the seal and we're going to position this where it's going to be and then we're going to adjust the lip of the seal to this because I'm sure that the seal needs to be shortened now. We're going to shorten it if we have to and we're going to make this nice rolled edge. We just have to remember that we want to position this a little bit higher than where this thing is now. Maybe we can... Actually, I can bend it. Okay. Okay, something like this. Okay, needs to go behind the seal. Like this. And I'm Surprisingly, we have floor here that we can clamp it to. And now uh, this fits pretty well all over here. Now the seal though is too long as we expected. And I can't really see where to cut it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark where it reaches right now. And when we take it out, we're gonna measure how much from this line to the step on this piece, and we're gonna cut this much from the seal. Okay, so you see how much it is? It's like, I don't know, half inch or three eighths maybe. So, okay, I'm gonna cut three eighths off the seal and we're gonna make that bend that they normally have there. But when you close the door, that gap looks pretty good. Even though we're gonna change the bottom of the door, still we have a pretty good gap now. Okay, let me deal with the seal now. Okay, let's see how it's gonna fit now. Ta-da! Think it is perfect. So we're just gonna try to roll the edge, like literally, just the edge, it's not going to affect the length at all because it's not going to be 90 degrees, it's going to be just a little 
road edge. Let's see how it looks with the door closed. <laughs> looks like a car. <laughs> Let me close the bonnet too. Nice. Wow. I'm happy. Really happy with it. And another example of my reverse recording syndrome where I start recording after I'm done. <laughs> so you can only see a picture of what I've done here. I rolled the edge with the pliers that you see in the back just a little bit at a time and that's all. And mounted it back on and this is what it looks like i think that fits beautifully so now we can uh, repair this piece here to match these two because that's our reference now let me pull you back actually so now in this situation we can start repairing our floor our inner seal our strengthener piece and everything but we can always refer to these outer panels as they are. That's going to be our memory stick. So that's what I was aiming, aiming for today. So in this case, we're going to put an end to this video here. Just, we're going to finish our coffee. That took a whole entire day, but I'm happy now. I'm happy that we have this part completed and all the internal repairs can be done without worrying too much so like i said that's going to be everything for this video once again i thank you for watching commenting and subscribing for supporting the channel even though i don't provide any benefits for anybody whether they support the channel or not because everybody has the same rights here everybody has the same access to everything there's no vip content there's no early access there's nothing everybody has the same access and still there are people who choose to support the channel and that's really really overwhelming so thank you guys for that i really appreciate it if you're considering supporting the channel financially there are multiple ways you can go to the link in the description to my patreon page and there you're gonna see there's three different ways to support the channel but if you want to do just a one-time donation at a random amount that's also up to you you can do that by making a paypal transfer to elin.yakov at trustybeauty.com or you can e-transfer to that email as well if you're in Canada. Also, I haven't reminded you lately, but uh, there's a Facebook group called Rusty Beauties. You can join and there's a uh, thousand members already there. Thanks to everybody who joined. It's a little Rusty Beauties community where everybody can share their projects, they can share their videos, promote their channels, promote their businesses as long as they're related to the Rusty Beauties restorations or you can post anything that is related to our Rusty Beauties. So the group is open, everybody can join. Just make sure that you join the group, not the page, because you can join the page as well, but the page is boring. That's where I used to post my videos and that's it. Nobody else could post there. In the group, you can post as well and everybody can see what you're doing. Everybody can hear your opinion. Everybody can answer your question or you can answer other people's questions and it is a little Rusty Beauty community that everybody helps each other. So with that said guys, I'm gonna sign off and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.